If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I purchased my first commercial property about six months ago with the goal of renting it out to a doctor on a long-term triple net lease. And this was a big milestone for me and my company because we've been buying and selling residential real estate for about 10 years now but a commercial property was set to create some really good cash flow for us coming into this year. But the universe sometimes has different plans for you, which is exactly what happened with this deal. Instead of finding a long-term tenant for this property, which is what our goal was, our broker actually found us somebody who wanted to purchase the property off of us instead, and they made us an offer that we could not refuse. So in today's video, I'm going to break down all the details of this transaction with you guys because I learned a lot about the commercial real estate investing process on this deal, and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you all. All right, so the usual public service announcement before we dive into the video guys if you wouldn't mind just hit the like button for me real quick if you could that really helps to support this video and if you follow along until the end and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future hit subscribe I'm posting a new one just like this every week all right so first we'll talk about what is commercial real estate investing in case this is a concept that you guys haven't heard of before and there are many ways to invest in commercial real estate but my specific target is rental property so that's what we'll talk about today and it's very simply just the concept of buying property that already has a tenant in it or buying property that's vacant and then finding finding a tenant to put in that property and renting it out to them long term. It works just like residential rental real estate, except the biggest difference between residential and commercial is that with commercial, you're looking to rent to businesses, which means that the lease terms are much longer, usually five years or more. There are many different types of commercial real estate that you can buy, and some examples would include multifamily, retail, storage, industrial, and medical, and each one of these asset classes has different pros and cons. And getting a loan on these properties is very similar to residential as well, except the underwriter is going to care a lot more about the tenant and the deal itself then they'll care about you and your personal credit, income, and net worth. And so in pursuit of my first commercial property, I chose to hone specifically in on medical space, and there's a couple of good reasons why, but the biggest reason is that I believe that most doctors and dentists will be able to weather any storm in the economy, and their businesses will be somewhat recession-proof. So now let's talk about what these commercial medical deals specifically look like in case you guys are looking to get into something like this in the future, you'll know what you're getting yourself into. A very common type of medical space that you'll find in my market is called a medical condo unit, and these are usually about 3,000 square feet, and they're located in a complex of five or 10 other businesses. The units are generally rented out to primary care doctors or dentists or surgeons or physical therapists or other specialty doctors. The properties are priced solely based on how much income they generate and the quality of the tenant that's in there. And that price is usually around $800,000 in my market. And based on the current cap rates, an $800,000 property should crank out about 50 or $55,000 in net income for you. The only expense on top of that is your mortgage payment. The lease terms vary a lot, of course, depending on the tenant. Some some tenants have been in the space a long time and they'd like to continue to be in the space a long time. Generally speaking, the deals that I'm looking at have tenants in place for at least another five years and then they give those tenants the option to extend for another five or even 10 years. As far as the financing is concerned, you're gonna be looking at a 25 year amortization loan at about 3.75%. Unfortunately, there usually is a balloon attached to that loan which has extended out the duration of the lease terms. And these deals are financed at 70% loan to value on average which means you're coming out of pocket 30% for your down payment. And that's a very high level overview about the financing part of it. And I actually learned a lot whenever I was interviewing all the lenders on this deal. So if you guys would like to know more specifically about the financing, let me know about it in the comments below and I'll make a video about that in the future. All right, so now that we've talked about what commercial real estate is and what the deals generally look like, I'm gonna give you guys a play-by-play -play on my specific deal and how it unfolded, and this will hopefully help you to be better prepared if you're pursuing a deal like this in the future. And I'm gonna put it out there that a lot of the stuff that we're gonna talk about today is stuff that I actually learned by doing my first deal, because as they say, it's important to get educated, but sometimes the best form of education is just getting your feet wet with real life experience. All right, so now let's get into it, guys. And first, I'm just gonna say that out of respect for all the people involved in this transaction, I'm gonna keep some of the details a little bit vague, but I'm gonna give you guys enough information today to where if you're pursuing a commercial property on your own, you should be able to kind of follow this video step by step and get to the finish line. I'm gonna break this into four major steps in the order that they happen to make it easier to follow for you guys. And the first one is the deal and the offer. Then we'll talk about the inspection period. Then we'll talk about the post-closing process. And then last, we'll talk about negotiating the lease and the purchase. All right, so next let's talk about the deal and the offer. So this property was actually brought to me off market because I have a relationship with an agent who knew that I was specifically looking for these types of deals. It was a nice 2,800 square foot medical condo unit, which is exactly what I was looking for. It had a surgery center, plus a couple of exam rooms, a couple of offices, a break room, and a reception area. The setting was in a beautiful, very well cared for community. And the story was that the current owner had been in business for about 15 
17 years, but he was dissolving his practice. So of course, along with that, he was also selling the space. The seller was looking for $750,000, which if the property was leased is actually a pretty fair price, but he was looking to sell it and deliver it vacant, which means that it's worth much less to me as an investor because I would need to spend the next six plus months trying to find a tenant after we closed. So after a lot of back and forth with the seller, we ended up negotiating down to a price of $640,000 with a 30 day inspection and then a 45 day close. So now let's talk about what happened during the inspection period. So 30 days is a standard length of time that you get for a commercial deal in comparison to usually only getting about 10 days for residential transactions. This was a huge relief for me because I needed that extra time to do a ton of extra due diligence, especially because this was my first commercial deal. We had a lot that we needed to accomplish during those 30 days. And the first thing that we did was we hired a home inspector, just like you would with a regular residential property. They came out and they inspected the plumbing and the electrical and the roof and the HVAC system and everything else. And they ended up deeming that the property was in very good shape overall. Next, we dove into the health of the HOA and we wanted to make sure that the HOA was well-managed, well-funded, and had a significant amount of reserves in the event that something would come up, like for example, if the parking lot eventually needed to be resurfaced. After several meetings and reviewing a ton of documentation, we determined that the HOA was in fact in good health. And the next step is we met with a couple of lenders to ensure that we'd be able to get financing on this property and we are happy to discover that the rates and terms were actually even better than we expected. And then after that, we interviewed several commercial real estate brokers, and these are the people who go out and actually find tenants or buyers for your property. We learned over the course of this process that we should be able to rent this space out for about $60,000 per year on what's called a triple net lease. That triple net lease factor too is a very attractive part of commercial deals because what that means is that you're passing all of the expenses down to the tenant. And so the only expense that you really need to worry about out of that $60,000 dollars in income that you're receiving is paying your mortgage payment. And then the last thing that we did was we hired an attorney, of course, at a very expensive rate to review all of the documents and everything we did during our due diligence process just to make sure that we were covering all of our bases. So after that insanely busy and chaotic 30 days, we were 100% confident that this deal was a good fit for us. And so we moved forward to closing. All right. So the post-closing part of the process was next. And by now we'd established a relationship with a broker who put together a great marketing package, who's going to find us a tenant, hopefully as soon as possible. We chose this one because he had about 20 years of experience and he specialized in medical space. Plus he was just generally a likable and trustworthy guy. He told us that normally it would take him about six months to find a tenant for a space like this, but it could take as much as nine months due to the pandemic. That wasn't a big deal to us though, because that's actually part of what gave us negotiating power to bring the price down on the acquisition of this space. Plus I budgeted for a nine month hold in our pro forma. So after we closed, he went on to marketing the space to all of the local brokers and doctors. And we actually had a couple of showings within the first couple of weeks. But after that initial buzz, to be honest, things kind of slowed down and we went months without receiving a whole lot of action or activity. I guess this is normal though for the process to be relatively slow moving in the commercial space. So I was not worried at all. And after a few months time, we actually had a really strong lead on a doctor who loved the space. After seeing the space multiple times and then determining that it was a good fit for his business, he wrote us an offer. Now that brings us to negotiating the terms of the lease with this doctor. And this is where things took an unexpected turn. So as I said, we were marketing this place for lease and we were looking for about $5,000 per month. But to our surprise, this doctor doctor loved the space so much that he actually wanted to purchase it from us instead. The floor plan, the location, and the proximity to the hospital were all a perfect fit for him and the trajectory of his business. So while we were not looking to sell this property and we were really looking forward to the cash flow that this property would create for us, you always need to be adaptable to different things happening in your business because you don't know exactly how things will always shake out. And just because things take a turn doesn't mean they're taking a turn against your favor. So we looked at the cards that we were dealt in this situation and then we ended up going back and forth with multiple counter offers with this doctor and ultimately arrived on a deal to sell him the place in 90 days. Him and his team needed those 90 days to work out those loan details, which we were perfectly okay with. So we agreed to lease him the property for those 90 days. And then we were set to close and sell him the property at the end of those 90 days. We made an agreement that in the event that their loan did not go through, once those 90 days were up, he would sign a 36 month lease. So it ended up being a win-win for both sides of the deal. And we just hit that 90 day mark last week and closed escrow. So that wraps up today's video for you guys. I hope this was pretty easy to digest and easy to follow. And I was really excited about putting this one together for you guys today because for one, obviously, I'm just really excited about the fact that this deal has come to a close. But in addition to that, I realized whenever I was trying to get educated on this process, 
there wasn't a whole lot of content available on YouTube about commercial real estate investing. And that was just a huge bummer for me because I really like to learn new information on YouTube. So now you guys know a little bit more of what to expect if you're pursuing a commercial deal. And to be honest, after having done just one deal, I feel so much more comfortable with the process. I'm feeling very prepared and confident as I pursue the next deal, which is exactly what I'm looking for now. I'm flipping through a dozen or more deals per week at this point, and unfortunately, none of them are a perfect fit quite yet, but you guys know I'm gonna be sharing all the details with you guys when I finally find that one that is a good fit for me. So stay tuned for more, and this would be a good time for me to remind you again, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because I'm posting new videos just like this one every week. And if you made it this far and you haven't hit the like button yet, please, please, please hit that like button for me now, because that'll really help to support this video. But that's all I've got for you guys this time, so until next time, see ya. Thank you